the twelve tribes of Israel returned to Judah. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 1. But now thus said the Lord, Who created you, O Jacob? Who formed you, O Israel? Fear not, for I will redeem you. I have singled you out by name. You are mine. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your folk from the east. will gather you out of the west. I will say to the north, give back. And to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 5 and 6. Thus said the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake I send to Babylon. I will bring down all her bars, and the Chaldeans shall raise their voice in lamentation. I am your Holy One, the Lord, your King, the Creator of Israel. It's so Isaiah chapter 43, verses 14 and 15. I am about to do something new. Even now it shall come to pass. Suddenly you shall perceive it. I will make a road through the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19. It is I, I who, for my own sake, Wipe your transgressions away and remember your sins no more. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 25. So the God of Israel roused the spirit of King Pul of Assyria, the spirit of King Tilgath, Pilneser of Assyria, and he carried them away. Namely, the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half tribe of Manasseh and brought them to Hala, Habor, Hara, and the river Gozan to this day. That's 1 Chronicles chapter 5 verse 26. In the day in the days of King Pekah of Israel, King Telgath Peleser of Assyria came and captured Jean, Abobeth, Makkah, Jonah, Kadesh, Hazor, Gilead, Galilee, the entire region of Naphtali, and deported all of the inhabitants to Assyria. That's 2 Kings, chapter 15, verse 29. In the ninth year of King Hoshi, the king of Assyria captured Samaria. He deported the Israelites to Assyria and settled them in Hala, at the river Habor, at the river Goza, and in the towns of Medea. That's 2 Kings chapter 17 verse 6. The king of Assyria brought people from Babylon, Kutta, Abba, and Hamath, and Sepharvim, and he settled them in the towns of Samaria in place of the Israelites. They took possession of Samaria and dwelt in its towns. 2 Kings chapter 17 verses 24 and through 35. The king of Babylon had them struck down and put to death at Riblah in the region of Hamath. Thus, Judith was exiled from its land. Samaria is the northern kingdom, also known as Israel. That's uh, 2 Kings, chapter 25, verse 1. And uh, also known as Ephraim. Thus said King Cyrus of Persia, The Lord God of heaven has given me all of the kingdoms of the earth, and has charged me with building a house in Jerusalem. Charged him with building the second temple. And gave him the kingdoms of the earth. Any one of you. Uh, oh. Building him a house in Jerusalem. Which is in Jerusalem. In Judah. 
any one of you of all his people, the Lord his God be with him and let him go up. That's 2 Chronicles chapter 36 verse 2. The first who settled in their towns on their property were Israelites, priests, Levites, and temple servants, while well, some of the Judahites and some of the Benjamites and some of the Ephraimites and some of the Manessites settled in Jerusalem. That's 1 Chronicles chapter 9 verses 2 and 3. From the books of Ezra and Nehemiah, the following verses were written by men who were eyewitnesses of the return of all of the tribes of Israel under the declaration of Cyrus of Persia, whom God anointed a Moshiach, a Gentile Moshiach, a Gentile anointed one, to clear the way for them to build the second temple. They testify that all twelve tribes and the tribe of the Levites. It's usually re referred to Israel as 12 tribes. Uh, there's 13 sons, okay, but only 12 received allotted lands. The Levites did not. They could go to all the different uh, tribal lands. So, but there's really 13 tribes, the Levites, the priestly tribe. They testified that uh, all four tribes in the tribe of the Levites returned to the lands of Judah and the lands of Benjamin. The lands of the kingdom of Samaria were inhabited by imported Gentiles. That's what all that was I was reading before. That's the defeat of the northern kingdom and the importation of Gentiles. When the seventh month arrived, this is Ezra, chapters 3, verse 1. When the seventh month arrived, the Israelites being settled in their towns in Judah, everybody who came back, remnants of all 13 tribes, defeated the northern kingdom by Assyria and uh, the southern kingdom Judah by Babylon, who had, uh, was always at war with the Chaldeans. Babylon went back and forth. And that's why there's a reference in that prophecy of uh, going uh, to Babylon and the Chaldeans shall raise their lamentations. They even lived amongst each other. I mean, you could call them the Chaldean uh, exiles, but basically I refer to them as Assyrian Babylonian exiles. For that matter, you could say Chaldeans, uh, Assyrian, Chaldean, Babylon, Persian exiles, because it was Persia when they were finally allowed uh, to leave. And uh, my understanding is not all left. Just those that wanted to. And uh, they were sent to Jerusalem. But there was nobody in the towns of Judah, for the most part. And uh, the remnants of each of the tribes had to uh, select their own property. How they did it, the scripture doesn't tell us. But we know they settled in their own towns. Uh, and that would be including, um, there was a mention of, oh, uh, carry forward. So, with that backdrop, Ezra. When the seventh month arrived, the Israelites being settled in their towns, the entire people assembled as one man in Jerusalem. Israelites. Okay, it is said and it's taught in Judaism. And I don't know where it began. It's in the town. But it, it, in all likelihood it began before that. Before the town. It, it's a story that made it into the town, I should say. I've only got two theories of why because it's so wrong. This is Israelites. This isn't, this isn't naming two tribes that settled in the towns of Judah and Benjamin. This is the Israelites. And they gather as one man. They gathered as one man before this at Orb. And as one man, they agreed to be the chosen people of God and abide all of the teachings of Moses given to him by God of his laws and commandments and rules.
Yeah, they're assembled as one man. That's where the whole concept of naming the matriarch, Jacob, I mean, in some ways you think they'd name Abraham, but uh, name Abraham Israel, but they did, it was Jacob. They would, God would. The priest, now what follows is a series of quotes just like that talking about Israelites. And you saw the mention that Manessa and uh, and Ephraim returned. Those are the two largest uh, live on Ephraim. The whole North Kingdom was called the Kingdom of Ephraim at one time, and the, and the half tribe of Manessa was there with the other half tribe, the one mentioned with Gadites and uh, can't remember the other name. They were east, and they got carried off early. And as a matter of fact, the land of Gad is uh, the land of Gilead. That's where Ramoth Gilead is, and uh, where Elijah the Tishbite, of which there's no clan of that name in the Hebrew Bible, is an inhabitant. And you know, he just appears out of nowhere, chapter 17 of either one or two kings, and uh, to tell, uh, I think it's King Ahaz, no, no, Ahab, uh, that there should be no more rain. God tells him to. That's, that's the first we see him. He just does it. We don't, we don't know, you know, he's just Elijah the Tishbite, an inhabitant of Ramoth Gilead. Well, he's a Gentile. And we don't know if he went through a fire of refinement, but we do know from other scripture that God wrote that I, that I can uh, interpret because of what God has taught me and which I've already shared in other videos, but I'm sure we'll go back over it again. But there's no question he's a man in divine things. Which is a man that the Spirit of God, like Ezekiel, enters into and he can hear God speak. God is in his spirit. So this is what follows. Uh, the priests, the Levites, and some of the people, and the singers, gatekeepers, and the temple servants took up residence in their town and all Israel and their towns. And in the time of Zerubbabel, and in the time of Nehemiah, and all Israel contributed the daily portions of the singers and the gatekeepers, and made sacred contributions for the Levites, and the Levites made sacred contributions for the Aaronites. It's Nehemiah, verse 12, uh, chapter 12, verse 47. Again, they're saying all of the Israelites. Everybody had to make this contribution. And I weighed out to them the silver, the gold, and the vessels, the contribution to the house of our God, which the king, his counselors, and officers, and all Israel who were present had made. That would be for building the second temple. Guard them diligently. And, and notice also when, when God uh, uh, gave Cyrus all the kingdoms of the earth and instructed him to build his temple in Jerusalem, that uh, he, made, he made a road for them. And that's how he did it. He had, he had Cyrus issue that declaration. And he said to all of his people who want to go back. He didn't say you two tribes that are left over. Those, those that couldn't find the Mediterranean and track back to the promised land. Those people. When this was over, the officer approached me saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the peoples of the land whose abhorrent practices are like those of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. That's all the people who are still there. You know, the tribes almost to, to, to for every lot. 
they never completely cleared their lots of the people who were there. Either that or the practices of all these all these peoples, all these tribes were still there. I don't know the practices. So Ezra at once put the officers of the priests and the Levites and all Israel under oath to act accordingly. They took the oath. All Israel. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to receive the prayer of your servant that I am praying to you now, day and night, on behalf of the Israelites, your servants, confessing the sins that we Israelites have committed against you, sins that I and my father's house have committed. That's Nehemiah, chapter 1, verse 6. I think I got one more from Nehemiah, then I have some commentary. When Sambalat, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the Ammonite, servant heard, it displeased him greatly that someone had come intent on improving the condition of the Israelites. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 10. The whole community that returned from the captivity made booths and dwelt in the booths. The Israelites had not done so from the days of Joshua, son of Nun, to that day. And there was very great rejoicing. The Israelites had not been in booth since. Now all the Israelites were doing it again. Not two tribes. The Israelites. The people Israel. As one. Uh, there's another one in chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. Okay, recapping all of that. The tribes of Reuben, Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh, and the northern kingdom of Samaria were deported northwest of Babylon. You know, the river Gazan, Habath, and all this. It's northwest of Babylon, which is Iraq. And to the towns of Medea, that's Iran. And the kingdom of Judah was deported to Babylon, which is also Iraq. Jerusalem is within the lands of Benjamin, which lands are considered part of the kingdom of Judah, since that is where the kings of Judah ruled from. That is why there is an emphasis on the Judahites and Benjamites in the accounts of the return of the remnant of the twelve tribes of Israel to the lands of Judah and Benjamin. Sometimes I think that that's what happened. That since everybody went to Judah and Benjamin, it is assumed that it's the tribes of Benjamin and the tribes of Judah, and where the other ones we don't know, they got lost. This, that would seem to be the source of the story. And one other place is with King David. After Saul was, uh, when he died uh, in war, I believe he fell on his own sword eventually, but um, Ten of the tribes wanted David to rule in Samaria and or the kingdom of Israel. And uh, but but two tribes wanted I don't even think they actually say which ten and which two. But he goes to Judah to rule. So there was another place where you got ten and two, but again there's thirteen sons. The the Levites could vote on a king. I mean, they just didn't have a lot of land. It's the 13 tribes. Okay, the northern kingdom of Israel is inhabited. Now, this is, God, this is what he dictated to me. The northern kingdom of Israel was inhabited by imported Gentiles. All of Israel had returned together to Jerusalem and Judah, mindful of all the imported Gentiles in the kingdom of Israel. Many of whom tried to stop the building of the second temple. When the seventh month arrived, the Israelites Okay, I've covered that. Okay, it is said in writings by sages and rabbis that ten of the twelve tribes of Israel became lost and did not return to Judah to build the second temple. There never were lost tribes according to the Hebrew Bible. 
If there were lost tribes, then Isaiah wrote a prophecy of God that was false and was not fulfilled. I'll read it again. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your folk from the east, will gather you out of the west. I will say to the north, give back. And to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 5 and 6. Isaiah's prophecy is to all Assyrian Babylon exiles returning by the words of God. The return of the exiles to the land of Israel given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob by covenant and partitioned among the twelve tribes of Israel by Moses and Joshua. That is not just the Babylon exiles of Judah and Benjamin. It includes all of the tribes that were defeated, deported, and exiled by the Assyrians before them. And they came back. As I mentioned, not all of them, but those God called them. He made a prophecy. He appointed somebody to release them that had them in uh, exile. I don't know. I mean, I guess that means they weren't allowed to leave and in a sense were slaves. I've never seen that term used. But that's what that particular prophecy is about. I know there's an in-gathering prophecy, but it's going to be the same. It's, it's, you know, all of us who want to come back. And as I've mentioned, uh, my very presence with God with me for those that believe it's going to bring plenty of people back to Israel. But you're always going to have people, particularly here in America, that just grew up here. It's all they know. And they have no plans on leaving their jobs and their uh, the places that, that they grew up and live uh, and go to Israel. It's just not going to happen like so many of these things that, you know, that, uh, that are in the Bible. you really got to think about them. And put and make them, you know, bring it into reality. There's ten lost tribes, really. Well, where's your big account on that? The only account you're gonna find on that is in the time and from stories. So this other thing I think happens. Again, God doesn't explain everything to me. He, it's the human experience, but He gives me plenty of knowledge. Here's here's the uh, the other thing is that. Uh, I'll get to that later. The Babylon exiles were the last to be deported to the vast lands of Babylonia, which was once Assyria, where all the exiles were, and by this time scattered far and wide throughout Babylonia along many different rivers. Oh, this one. <laughs> Actually, that finishes it up, but I guess I just said that. But this is how he, dic he dictated to me. The Babylon exiles are all 13 tribes in Assyria, Babylonia. I had to learn all this before we ever put anything on paper. And that's why sometimes I tend to just take off as I remember it. Uh, but I like to read from it because this is scripture. It's not canonized, but it's divinely given to me. Not by inspiration, as the New Testament is said to have been written by the Holy Spirit, in men, I guess. I don't know what they're talking about. I mean, I know the Holy Spirit is right here. He, he, he said, I've never been with a Christian. He said, I don't go to Christians when they accept Jesus. He said, I don't have anything to do with it. He says a little bit more, but it's kind of on the lines of God talking about it, so you probably don't want to hear that from an angel. God's not happy with this group that says he killed his son so they could disobey him. Not happy at all. He's not happy that someone says he accepts Jesus, uh, human sacrifice. <laughs> oh, that he performs human sacrifice. Now you might want to go, go, go learn up on the deities of the mans. People, I was surprised. You know, they were still around in the 1600s. The Spaniards put an end to that culture and society, uh, which is, you know, again, it's something for people like Jews for Judaism to know you're still here. You who have been put upon so much that it became your duty to atone for the world so that God would, would take his imperfect creation and make it perfect for you. You would be exalted and held up high, and all would, 
acknowledge that you've been right about God all along. All Christians will see that Jesus is a false idol. Now, Muslims, that's four billion people. That their gods are false. That there's only one true God, the God of Israel. What I will tell the Christians, there's only one true teacher of righteousness. There's only one true man described in Isaiah 53. And you're listening to him. I'm a man in divine beings. That's the important part. But you have a description of me. I have a book that explains everything that happened to me in my life that helps fit those verses or that evidences I fit the verses. And I'm the only man who's ever been able to explain it. I'm the only man who's ever shown the connection between Ezekiel and that. And uh, an intelligent man I am. But I'm not smarter than every Jew who's ever lived that studied this and commentated on it and put it together. They've lived on this book for 3,000 years or for whenever the first scroll was written by Moses. Moses David's about 3,000 years ago and however many generations there were between David and uh, uh, the partition of the lots in those tribes. I know there's 400 years in Egypt. So, uh, at some point you have to say it's simply not possible. And if it's not possible, there's only one answer. It is God. It is a miracle that I know these things. And for that matter, it is a miracle I'm alive. Period. I offer myself for guilt. I received long life. I was told I had about a month or so to live 20 years ago, and I've not seen a doctor since. Not only that, I so showed no signs of lung cancer. I survived colon cancer that I had no business surviving. It was so advanced by the time I got treatment. So what, I had that one other thing on the 10 and 2, I thought. Okay, that's all I had. I do have a short clip I wanted to put on of my, uh, you know, you know, it came up this morning because I was reading, they told me to do this particular video and from the book, and it says Cyrus uh, received the kingdoms of all the world from God. And, and he was appointed to build the second temple. Why? Well, I'm to clear the way for the third temple and so many other things I got to do. What am I, what am I giving? A motorcycle. But I love it. And I, I tell God all the time it's a fair price. Because I'd go to your fire or find it for free. If I didn't have a single fun thing to do. If I wasn't going to go, go to Israel. If I wasn't going to be the speaker I always wanted to be as a lawyer. But just simply didn't measure up. I'd still go through it just to be the changed person that I am. And to get to know him in his spirit. The great, great persons. Anyway, a brief All right, this video is right here is for those naysayers that think that an Indian scout uh, is a slouch. Right there. <laughs> That's all I got. I can tell you one thing. This bike loves second year. <laughs>